Ever since I was a little girl, I had this dream. One day, I become the superhero in my very own fairy tale. Hello? See, I got a problem here. It's a three-person wreck. Only two accounted for. We need something to read. It's a missing persons case. Suspicious circumstances. Every time I opened my eyes, I found myself in a new place. Did you talk to her friends? What happened? What is she? When will you stop looking for her? When we find her. My wounds were healing quickly. When you're a superhero, sometimes you have to be careful what you wish for. Because one day, it may come true. I can fly. A passport. It's not here. She's alive. The invisible. I called him the accident. The bruises that he has, they're not from the accident. Where is she? Is she OK? Fairy tale garden. Fairy tale garden. I am here in the virtual California theater to still celebrate Cinequest 2021. And I am very pleased to have with me tonight a writer, director, filmmaker who's got a film at Cinequest called My True Fairy Tale. And it's it's a little different from some of the uh, of the pieces that we've we've covered. And so I'm really happy to have him here, Dimitri. I hope I said that right. I should have asked that up front. <laughs> A lot of people do. It's it's actually my name is Dimitri, and uh, it, um, it's actually something that my daughter uh, uh, enjoyed calling me uh, as I started making films. It, it, but it's really Dimitri, so I just say D Dimitri. That's it. Okay, I was going to ask about that. Why I have that? Uh, but that's that. That's really sweet. So let's let's talk about my true fairy tale, which is a bit of a fantasy, a bit of a science fiction. And why I say it's a little off the beaten path for what Cinequest is, is that I really felt strongly watching it that it's really a family film. Uh, and I could see it, I don't, it's not coming from a novel, but as a YA novel and it was getting adapted to film. So what was the genesis of my true fairy tale? Um. Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Derek. The, uh, the, the truth of the matter is I, um, it was not the film that I wanted to make as my first feature film uh, because it's, um, it's about my daughter who um, abruptly had to depart uh, as, par as, uh, uh, as an accident happened uh, um, roughly about four years ago on Memorial Day weekend, 2017. And uh, um, being in this very, very dark place, uh, no words can describe where I was. I can't even describe to you today where, what this void or what this vacuum space was. Um, um, I simply refused to believe that um, she was gone and uh, um, I started speaking with her friends um, and uh, I decided to paint her back to life because I thought that th that's how I felt. And uh, I felt that the only way I could do this is by doing what I know is by telling a story, a story about her where um, she is um, alive. Mm -hmm. and, and I can't imagine honestly going through that pain, but uh, it is an inspirational film, a hopeful film, and uh, many points to, I, I guess, you know, guiding those, those behind it, 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 to seizing life. And so, you know, I'll ask, as you were at, as you were 
interviewing her friends, or I, maybe that's too clinical a word for it, as you were talking with her friends, did you get a new side to her to build the, the character in your film? I never looked at it that way. Um, I, I, I spoke to her friends. Um, sort of, I, I almost became one of, uh, I, I became a friend to her friends. I became part of the gang, sort of. And um, I like to think that I was very, very close with Alyssa and uh, um, she made me feel like I was her best friend. And in a way, she had this ability of making everyone next to her feel that she was the best friend of that person. So in fact, we had a best, she was everybody's best friend. Um, building a character, I maybe sub, on a subconscious level, but um, I think um, she really co, as funny as, as it may sound, she co-wrote the film with me and she more or less let me know how she wanted this story to be told. If that makes any sense. It, it does. It, it does. And it, and it is interesting to me then that the, so she has an analog, I mean, I'm assuming, you know, she has an analog character in the film as the, as the protagonist, but then the analog to you is not her best friend, though she clearly wants to. It's a, it's a father who has turned away or run away from uh, not just responsibility, but, but his own talent. So then clearly that's not you. So <laughs> what guy did that? Well, that's, you bring up a very, very good point. Uh, and this film is inspired by true events, but I would say it would be stretched to say it's based on true events. It is not, and it's quite fictional. Um, and I, uh, in real life, my relationship with Alyssa was a little bit different. And from the character standpoint, um, yeah, the, 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 the father figure in the film is not very likable persona until that arc is made. And um, it sort of came out that way on the paper. Uh, many characters in the film came out that way because it's just how it happened, how the script was writing itself. That said, um, all the characters, especially the younger characters, all the names for them, they were made up by real friends of Alyssa. And they're very loosely based on uh, these characters. Although I would say again, it would be a stretch to say that um, it's very close to the truth. Yeah, and I, and I want for people who have not seen it yet, although I'll call this out now, you know, that I'm running the banner that uh, it, you can stream it for Cinequest to, uh, to March 30th and, and will be beyond. But it is, I, I don't. If it, if there's anything realist, it, it's magical realism. It's a it's a fantasy, clearly, um, you know. So I don't, don't want anybody to to mistake that going in and go. Wait a minute, this this got a little bizarre um, or a little out there. No, it, it, that, that's what it is. But you you are working with uh, as uh, as you, as uh, the grandparents two powerhouse actors, Joanna Cassidy and Bruce Davison, really, really need to see them interacting. And you are working with a lot of young actors. And so uh, as a feature film, you know, as a director, what kind of interaction and, and, and handling those, that, those different places in their career were you, were you doing? Um, you know, I, um... As a director, um, I like to take an approach of staying uh, as much as I can away from the creative process of an actor uh, and giving them that sacred space, sort of speak to um, 
make a magical moment. And this goes for Emma, who plays the lead, who I think did phenomenally, all the way to Bruce or Joanna, who played the grandparents. And there was no difference at all. Um, because at the end of the day, um, who am I to tell the actors how to act? This is what they do. And I think it's apparent that um, all the actors in the film did a fine job. And um, uh, my job, my approach was to create that space of love and that space of safety where, again, they can manifest those magical moments. I can, I can, I can sense you, you that obviously from the, from the content as well, that you are running a safe uh, collaborative set, creative set. And uh, so and it's also interesting, I should say that rather than the medium of film, which is how you have worked through this, the father in this is the medium of music. So do you have any comment on that? Why switch to a musician? Um, my, I would say my second hobby is being a musician. I'm a classically trained pianist. In fact, um, the two main themes in the film I wrote. Uh, of course, without Pancho, uh, the composer of the film, uh, these themes could not have been brought to an absolutely incredible level uh, the way they have been brought. And uh, um, I don't know if I'm answering your question correctly, but it, it, the music to me uh, was essential part of the film. And partly that became a storyline as well for the father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I think that, 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 that gets to it. I, I, I did not realize you were a classically trained pianist and, and now that makes perfect sense. But it, it does certainly evoke much emotion and, and allows uh, some of you a thread to weave through the whole thing and, and tie it together, that, that theme, that variations. Uh, I think if I'm recalling correctly, the, the father had left after composing a, a piece and then hadn't composed anything since. So uh, again, you know, this, is, and maybe that's why I, th I thought of it so much as, as a, a great project for uh, a great film rather for uh, YA audiences. I mean, this is about processing grief and moving on and enjoy out of it um, or beyond it, I guess better. Um, so what, uh, what is next? For my true fairy tale, Cinequest ends. It, it you know wraps up in in a few days. It's uh, on March 30th. We're hoping that it'll come back in August and people will be able to actually gather and see these films in theaters. But but for the film itself, what and and Dimitri, what is next? Um, Derek, this has been uh, you know a, a absolutely a journey of surprises and. Uh, uh, um, uh, we're very, very fortunate to announce that the, the, the film has been acquired by Gravitas Ventures and it is Wonderful. to uh, theaters and on demand on April 9th. Um, oh, terrific. Uh, uh, it, it's uh, also uh, is going to uh, be featured on, um, on April 18th. Uh, to 25th at the Julien Debuc International Film Festival, where we just found out that it was nominated for the best feature film. Um, um, and um, yeah, who knows, but we're super fortunate. And again, it's, 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 it's really a blessing to have had such an incredible, incredible team behind me. And uh, um, of course, most importantly, the inspiration of Alyssa, who uh, co-wrote the film with me. Yeah, and and do you have more films in you? Um, I I really hope I do. Um, I, I have a few projects that I'm currently uh, in discussions with uh, several production companies, um, and I'm very excited about a few in here, um, especially one story um, uh, with a similar content that um, somehow found its way into here and uh, I just need to find a time to put it on the paper. 
Okay. Well, thank you so much for taking the time this evening to, to talk, and uh, thank you for your film. Uh, it's true labor of love, and, and, and every bit of that love is on the screen. So once again, thank you, and, and best of luck with this. Thank you so much, Derek. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any Fanboy Planet videos. And remember, use your powers for good.